guys, my name is Michelle and I create hair, makeup and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about eyeshadow, everything about eyeshadow, okay? I've created two different eye looks, two different shapes all together. So if that sounds like something that you want to learn, then keep on watching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this video out by assuming that you know nothing about eyeshadow. A few people were complaining that my previous looks were a little more advanced and they wanted like a proper breakdown. So let me just tell you how I learned about eyeshadow. Please keep in mind that I'm not a pro. This is just stuff that I had to teach myself by telling myself these different stories and these little narratives and that is how you know I, I sort of approached eyeshadow. Today we're going to take the Sofax Revolution palette. So this is what the inside of the palette looks like. And this is the palette that I learned the most on. When you're doing eyeshadow, you always have to start with a transition shade. And if you don't know what a transition shade is, generally you will see that whenever people are wearing eyeshadow, there'll always be a color here, right? So you will have like the main eyeshadow here, which is like the deepest, darkest color. You will always see that there's a different color over here in the periphery of the eye, which means it is on the crease of the eye. And generally what we always do is we like to start with a color which is just a little darker than your eye base color. This eyeshadow palette, since Soph is a YouTuber and she's not a makeup artist, she wanted to make it very, very easy for us. That is at least what I think. So generally, whenever you start your eyeshadow looks right, you always want to pick a bone color like this. And this is the color that will help all of the other colors blend together. Now, right after I use this bone color, I'll always go into this color. If I'm not mistaken, I think this was Kapiti. So my base makeup is done, but I haven't primed my eyes. Now, when you're using eyeshadow and you're putting eyeshadow on a base that has no product on it, the colors are not going to show. So it always makes sense for you to use an eyeshadow primer. And a lot of the times, you can also use your concealer as an eyeshadow primer. It's perfectly fine. In my opinion, I don't own eyeshadow primers per se. I just use a highlighting concealer. And when I say highlighting concealer, I mean a concealer which is quite light. So if you remember in my last video where I broke down my base makeup, if you haven't seen it, then it's up somewhere here. Anyway, check that video out and you can come back here. So what I did was, I took my Makeup Revolution Banana Powder and what I'm going to do is, obviously, I'm going to set my base. Why do I set my base? Because if you're a beginner to eyeshadow and you want to learn how to blend, please don't try to apply your eyeshadow on a wet base because that is going to be far more difficult to blend. I'll just pack it on the sponge and I'm just going to go under my eye. And this is called baking. Now, I'm not trying to bake my under eye to set it and make it last longer. What I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to put this powder so that it catches any fallout on my face. Since my base makeup is already done. So, it's a very good idea to take your powder and just sort of extend it so that you know exactly where the eyeshadow goes or rather where the eyeshadow stops now remember we're not going out with a face like this right we're just gonna dust off all of the powder once we're done this eyeshadow palette the amount that this eyeshadow palette has taught me about eyeshadow and about how to apply it and what goes with what i love this palette i love this palette i mean it's it's such a good palette to start with and i'll explain why let's say you don't have a translucent powder you will take this color right here and it is a very nice bone shade and what, what you can do is some people just set uh, from here to here so which is like from the bone to your brow or some people just set all of it I'm telling you to set all of it because trust me it just makes everything easier and what I'll do is I'll take a brush like this 
because a brush like this is really nice for blending and dispersing color, not concentrating color per se. This is my pack 204 eyeshadow brush. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go into this shade right here in the palette, okay? Now, you're not looking to concentrate color, right? You're looking to disperse color. So you want it to be nice and blown out. You don't want it to be concentrated in one area, which is why when I take the color, I will tap the brush off. This is going to make sure that you don't have any excess product on your brush. And the first thing that I'm going to do is, now don't, don't focus on holding your brush like this or holding your brush like this. A lot of people will recommend holding your brush like this. It's been so many years that I've just been applying eyeshadow like this that I can't change my technique now. I'll just take this eyeshadow, right? And I'm not holding the brush very tightly. Now, there are a lot of terms, okay, that you will hear in these videos. Uh, there's windshield wiper, there's circular, and I'm barely even touching my lid with the brush. I'm being super light and super delicate. And I'm just taking this color and in circular motions, right? I'm just going on my crease. I'm gonna take uh, quite a bit of that product. And listen, when you're starting with your colors, okay? You can always add more, but you can never take away. Okay, so always start with a small amount. It'll take you a little longer, but trust me, this is how you'll get a nice seamless blend. So what I'm doing is, and I'm barely even touching my eye. I'm being so gentle with it. Like I'm not going like this, okay? I'm, I'm not doing that. Firstly, eye area, be delicate, okay? And this is generally what we call a transition shade. Now, your biggest brush. Use your biggest brush in your transition and then after that start using smaller brushes since i want to take this tutorial and make it very very easy for you guys and make you understand that listen you don't need 10,000 brushes if you're not doing a detailed look you can just accomplish the look with like a few brushes that is why today during the entire tutorial i'm only going to use the pack 228 and the pack 204 okay so i applied this color right now after this I don't want a single color on my crease, okay? I want a few colors mixing and marrying together and blend it together. And that is one thing that's going to make your eyeshadow look like, you know, like, like you're a pro at makeup, all right? <laughs> Fake it till you make it, ladies, right? There's nothing wrong with mixing both your colors in the eyeshadow palette itself, okay? Again, I'm not concentrating color, so tap, 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 tap. So I'm just going to take the brush and now this time I'm not going to, you know, go right up here because you can see that color sort of stops here, right? So I'm just going to go a little below because the colors are darker, right? So you will get a nice gradient, light, dark, darkest. Can you see how the depth is being created in your eye? When you're doing your crease makeup, right? When you're doing your transition colors, stick with your mattes, okay? If you want to focus your shimmers and stuff, try to use the shimmers on the lid. Your transition, mostly I would say, it looks really nice with a matte color. So I'm gonna look at the palette here and which are the other shades that would help me get like nice dimension. Uh, I can see the pink here. I can see this orange here, I can see this peach here. So all of these are my options. And don't worry, you might say that, hey, you're doing a blue look, or, or let's say um, you're, you're, you're doing a black look. Why, why are you using these colors? It's totally fine. It's absolutely fine, not a big deal. So I'm just gonna take these three colors and see, this shade has a little bit of shimmer in it, but it's, it's not, the shimmer is not too crazy. It is not as shiny as these other uh, colors that you see here. And if it's just a tiny bit of shimmer in the in the palette, like little flakes of uh, tinsel, it's, it's totally fine. All right, take my brush. Sorry, don't blind you guys. And again, I'm gonna start adding. Can you see all of it looks like one shade, but if you come close, you will see that there's so much dimension. So I took these colors, right? And I just tapped the excess of my brush 
and that means I have the freedom to take these colors and put them on my crease without it looking like you know like a pink or an orange look at this not to say that these colors cannot be built up you can absolutely build these colors up if I wanted to do let's say a pink okay a full pink eye I could totally do that and I could build this color to look nice and rich but I'll use a different brush for that I won't use a blending brush I'll use probably a flat brush anyway let's not get into that right now what I'm just doing is look I'm just building dimension you can see you can see the powder that I laid down right on top then you can see that light brown shade then it gets a bit darker it gets a bit warmer you can see like pinky orange but none of it feels like it has no business on my crease all of it looks like yeah this is cohesive this is telling a story now on this eye I'm just going to take the brown right and with circular motions I'm going to focus this color over here on the sides I'm not going to focus the brown here this is my outer edge okay a lot of people call it the outer V as well what I do is since I hold my brush here right I always have one finger on my face that way you know the pressure is applied here so that this is nice and loose none of these are pro tips okay these are just things that I do that I that I've always done and yeah now that it's been so many years you can't expect me to change my skills right I'm not going to be able to learn how to apply eyeshadow differently. The pros do it like this, but I cannot imagine. Okay, fine. I can imagine myself doing it like this, but why? Why does it have to be so difficult? I just prefer doing this. It makes sense to me. I have some control. I mean, if you do it like this, you'll have no control. It's very difficult to, you know, sort of do your deep detail work. But over here, I have the control here and you know my brush is loose so my brush is loose here but I still have that control so this is just how I prefer to do it I just feel it's much easier or maybe I just started off with bad technique five years down the line do you think I'm going to change my techniques it's almost like changing your golf swing are you going to change okay fine people do change their golf swing I'm making some horrible points okay today so can you see I took that color and I focused it right here if at all you feel like no I've gone too heavy it's looking too blended what do I do I need to rectify it you can just take like a tissue paper or something like that wipe your brush down so swirl your brush right I'm just using my towel that's on my lap so most of the color right most of the color See, this is one way to check you just take your hand and put the brush on your skin see there is nothing right which means I've cleaned my brush although it doesn't look clean it still looks like it has a lot of product on it I've cleaned it and I'm just doing this what does this do but whatever colors I have on my lid right it is just I'm blending and marrying this these colors together so that when you actually look at my eye you are not going to be able to tell that hey she put down orange she put down pink she put down beige you will think that all of it is nicely blended but you won't have an idea of the colors that i put this is also a really nice way if you feel like no the part right below my eye is looking weird i'm looking like raccoony you know i have like raccoon eyes you can always take your powder or you can take that bone shade I could have used this bone shape too. I just take it and right below my eyebrow, I just place this color. Till I feel like, yeah, I'm satisfied. This is looking nice. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this eye, right? Except for the brown and I'll come back. I'm going to go and do the browns now. These two browns, right? And I will just sort of blend this out. As you could see, I took the brown and I carried it here, right? When I took the pink and the red and all of that, I carried it here. I'm creating, as you can see very clearly, I've created different looks on my eye. What I've done is all of my crease going from left to right, right, have those colors and they are built up. And on this crease, I've taken all of those colors, focused it everywhere except for the brown. I focused the brown just here. Let's just take that other brush that I was talking about, right? The pack 228 brush. 
Now what I'm going to do with this brush is, I'm going to go into the black. But black is very intimidating if you're a beginner, right? So I'm just going to take the black right here and I'm going to take some of the brown. Black brown, black brown. I keep switching from one color to the other. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to take that color and I'm going to place it on my lid. Right? This is my moving lid. And I'm going to be very, very careful. I'm not going to go ham and apply and deposit a lot of color. Yes, I am depositing color and concentrating color. But since it is a black and I don't want to go overboard, it is a good idea to tap off. And I'll start at the bottom. I won't go to the top just yet because I want the richest pigment right here. I want the richest pigment right here and I will just keep applying. First I'll just place it right and I feel like okay this is enough. I don't want to go overboard with this color black. I'm going to be very very delicate. Now listen, it didn't have to be a black, okay? It could have been any color. I'm just using a black because I know that black intimidates people, right? Now slowly slowly I'm going to start circular motions and I'm going to start blending the color so that it blends with my transition colors. And you don't have to be restricted. I'm just showing you that this is a different eye shape from this. Where the black meets the transition color, I'm just going to go in with those warmer colors and I'm just going to place this here. Wipe it on your towel again, right? The color is wiped. Take it, test it on your hand. Is there any color pay off? No, which means your brush is clean, right? Go into the pink, the orange. Go back and forth, tap and work it in your eyes. If I feel like, okay, this line is a little harsh, right? Wipe that brush down on your towel and blend till this is nice and seamless. I promise if you blend, you will take away pigmentation, right? And you will be left with a nice seamless blend. So yeah, that's what it looks like. I promise you in person none of this is harsh. But like I said, our relationship is based on trust, right? So you have to trust and believe. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You have to trust that I'm not going to stir you wrong. Okay? And as you can see, that powder that I placed down here, right, helps me. It, it serves as this guide. I know not to put my eyeshadow down. I know to sort of keep the shape up like that because it's going to lift my eye up okay so now that i did that right let's go to the other eye i'll go back in with the 2 to 8 i want some more depth then i'll just take some of the brown and i'll just build this up a little bit circular motions but remember, if you make a mistake, you can always go back and fix it, okay? Like for example, you see that I've put a lot of brown here. But don't worry, I put the banana powder, right? And you'll see there's a lot of fallout also on my eyes. Once I flick the banana powder off, all of that is just going to go. Now, let's say I want to take, which color do I take? Neutral. A lot of people like neutral looks like, right? Uh, so which color, which color, which color? Okay, no. Neutral is very boring. I don't want to do a neutral. Let's say I want to go in with the purple, right? Because I want to show you one trick. I'm just going to take my finger, okay? I'm going to swirl it in this purple. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the purple and just with my finger, no brushes, I'm just going to place this and swipe down. If you do like this, right, you're not going to get any pigment. When you want the most pigment, what you do is rub your fingers in the palette, take the color, okay, place it on your eye and swipe down. Place it on your eye and swipe down. Can you see how much color you're dispersing? 
that way. Now if I think that yeah okay this is fine. I like the color but I want it to be brighter. Why isn't it brighter? You're just gonna take a spray bottle with water. A lot of people use Fix Plus but listen I cannot be that bougie. Firstly, I don't use Fix Plus, okay? I'm cruelty free. But yeah, a lot of people will take some kind of a setting spray and you know, like douse their brushes. And when you're working with shimmers, right? If you use, you know, like some water or some setting spray or whatever, then automatically uh, the pigmentation becomes crazy. Can you instantly see the change? It just looks wet and so beautiful. I'll just go in with a pack 228, right? I'll just go into the brown, just a little bit, and maybe add another color, okay? Tap. And then I'm just going to go between these two shades. And I'm just going to The colors which is the purple and the brown, right? They are starting to blend together and look seamless. So now, as you can see, there's a harsh line here. I'll go back in with my transition shades, just a pinch, and then start blending so that there's no line. And when I blend, what I'll do is, I'll take my brush half on and half off. So half on the purple and half off the purple. And I will just start blending. Now, one last thing, and I will be using another brush. I'm going to use my pack 201 brush. So what I'll do is, I'll try to look for a light color in the palette. So for the purple, I'm really liking this light pink it's a shimmer right and even for the black because there's no problem it's black you can use any color in fact if you're putting black on your lid right you can use purple in your transition you can use blue in your transition you can use green you can use whatever you want there, 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 there's no wrong answers there so yeah i'm just gonna take some of that because i've used a dark color right i want the innermost part of my eyes to look nice and open. Did you see how instantly this has opened my eye up? So I'll take the same pink with the pack 201. If you take a lot of this color on your brush, then you're going to concentrate it. So I would say take a little bit, build it up and blend it out. You don't want it like stuck on one place. Next what I'll do is I'll just apply my eyeliner. I'll just put some mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and what did I tell you? Lashes, mascara and eyeliner completely change the look, right? A lot of the times you'll wear your uh, eyeshadow and you'll be like, no, I. I don't like this, it's not looking that great. But the moment you wear your liner and you wear your lashes or mascara, whatever you're doing, right? Everything will just change. All right, so we had baked, right? Under our eye to catch the fallout and we had baked here. Now you can see that I have fallout here. I have a little bit of fallout here. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit. But now what I'm gonna do is since I've completed my eyes, I'll take a brush. This is also from the BH Cosmetics br uh, brush set and I'm just going to dust all of that off. And the beauty of this powder is that very easily you can just flick all of that away and it's gone. Can you see? It's just gone. Can you also see how the foundation sat on my face? and a little bit of oil is seeping through now when oil seeps through right don't worry about it it's if you're an oily skinned queen like me and trust me i'm the oiliest person i know okay not a problem if you're oily remember that you will age you know slower 
so it is really good if you're oily do not ever 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 be upset if you're an oily girl okay i thank my stars all the time if i'm out and i see my face is oily right i'll carry a sponge or better yet i'll carry some blotting paper what i will do is i'll just take that blotting paper or whatever it is tissue paper whatever it is and i will just blot because it's not a good idea to add powder on oil it's just going to cake up really badly and look really ugly anyway this is this is not a this is not a complexion video i don't want to stray from the topic although listen this is not a pro channel i want to treat this channel as you know we're just girlfriends talking or you could be a guy Point is, we're friends, okay? We're just talking. I'm not a professional, and whatever rational, right? Whatever rational I've given you during this video, none of that was professional, okay? These are just the little stories that I tell myself to sort of teach myself new things. So I'm like, okay, you know, this is that color family, and this is going together, and this looks intentional. Listen, none of these are like eyeshadow theory, okay? This is just me telling you, like, you know, how I approach eyeshadow, and you know, over the years using eyeshadow, this is pretty much what I do. This was it. This was the video. This is how I approach eyeshadow. Hopefully, you learned something from this video, and you gained some value. And if you did, what are you waiting for? Hit that like button. Send me a comment. Don't be so shy. If if we are friends and we have this relationship and we trust each other, we'll we'll have fun. We'll kiki, okay? So yeah, leave me a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram. My handle is Curly Girl Michelle. Uh, that was it. That was the video. I'll see you next time.